Why do I want you to like, share, and subscribe? Because I want to be able to go to Chicago and get to the bottom of some of these abortion cases. This is Christina with the Sisyphean Journal, and today is November 11th. Now, today we have three anniversaries of deaths in Chicago where I really don't have a lot of information. In 1909, a homemaker named Marion, 29 years old, died supposedly, but you can't always trust the Homicide in Chicago interactive database, supposedly at her home on North 52nd Avenue in Chicago. She died from septicemia caused by an abortion, and a Dr. E. L. Pope was indicted by a grand jury. I haven't been able to find out if the case even went to trial. Like, share, subscribe, send me to Chicago so that I can investigate. Now we jump ahead to 1916. A 28-year-old homemaker named Margaret died, according to the interactive database, at her Chicago home by sepsis caused by an abortion per perpetrated by Cecilia with a Polish last name I can't pronounce. Now, the Homicide in Chicago Interactive Database put her profession as abortion provider. I've since looked through census records and found out that she was a midwife. And she was held by the coroner, but as far as I can tell, the case never went to uh, trial. Like, share, subscribe. I want to read the inquest. Then we jump ahead to 1929, when a 23-year-old named Mary Louise died in Chicago from an abortion, but they were never able to identify the perpetrator. Again, like, share, subscribe. I want to read the inquest records. Now, you notice that of these three deaths that we have the anniversaries today, one was performed by a doctor and one by a midwife, and we don't know who the perpetrator of the third one was. And this is something that is very common. The abortion rights movement wants you to think that prior to legalization, Abortions were being done by greasy old men with coat hangers, or the woman would reach for the rustiest coat hanger in the closet, or, you know, her sister-in-law would do it, or whatever. And yes, there were some women who performed abortions like that, or submitted to abortions like that, but research that I, I really, really, really need to do a video about this time, about this sometime. Research shows that the women who resorted to really dangerous abortions whether it was self-induced or whether it was done by a lay layperson, they generally had mental health issues and tended to be a little self-destructive to begin with, especially the women who did the self-induced abortions tended to have a history of self-harm. And self-induced abortions persist. I occasionally do see a abortion, an abortion death in the safe and legal era that was self-induced. They do persist, and they're probably related to mental health problems, but we don't study them. Why? Because politically, these abortions just don't happen. It's politics. Now, I have seen a lot of abortion deaths in Chicago because of Chicago, uh, the Homicide in Chicago Interactive Database. You can just type in abortion and bing, brings up all the cases. That's why so many of these cases were in Chicago um, that I cover. Now, again and again and again, doctor, 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 midwife, doctor, midwife, midwife. And the abortion lobby wants midwives and nurse practitioners and other non-physicians to be able to do abortions. So, you know, these abortions would be perfectly legal if you simply change the law. There would be no difference between these abortions and legal abortions. And that's something I wish people would get. Legalization did not fix things, and pro-lifers, criminalization didn't stop all abortions. We have to consider criminalization of abortion to be a tool and not a solution. <laughs> 